uh, glad to have a win uh, coming out of those, those, that first week. Uh, a lot of teams don't know what to expect. Um, you think you have an idea of where you are, and then there's always, it's always some of what you thought and some of what you didn't. Uh, very excited about some of the things that we did on Saturday. At the same time, I'm equally uh, looking forward to correcting some of the things that I think that we can improve upon. And uh, that, to me, is what makes a great team and a great defense as you move forward in the year is, you know, praising the process of the things that you do well and yet at the same time being very intentional about improving week to week to week. And that's when, you know, by the end of the season, the great defenses on the back half of the season – They've seen things, they know what to expect, and they go out and execute at a very high level. Looking forward to doing those things. In terms of the, uh, uh, the game, uh, we always start with takeaways, tackling, and effort. Um, thought from a takeaway standpoint, we left some things on the field. Uh, uh, did have uh, opportunities to create some, uh, uh, some negative plays and some sacks, which was really good. But, but uh, you, you hope uh, that you can get those and create some takeaways from them both. Uh, and, and causing some fumbles, and also I thought we left some interceptions out there on the field. It was good that we got our uh, our interception at the end to finish in a two minute drill that was uh, that was encouraging to see uh, to guys finish and then on top of that, uh, it continued what is now the longest uh, active FBS streak in takeaways i think we 're up to nineteen straight games now, longest in the country, so that 's certainly encouraging from that standpoint. Uh, from an effort standpoint, thought our effort was phenomenal. Um, the guys played with uh, a very uh, uh, violent attitude. You know, they went and attacked uh, uh, the ball. Um, thought we didn't finish always properly, and we'll talk about that in just a second here and with, uh, with tackling. But in terms of effort and the way that they uh, pursued the ball, I thought there were some, uh, some things to be praised for sure. In terms of tackling, I think there's no, uh, no ifs, ands, or buts about it. It wasn't even close to the standard that, that we have set for ourselves. Um, I counted 23 uh, uh, missed tackles that I thought were, were uh, critical, uh, am amounting to 181 yards of yards after contact. If you put that into a game where you held them to 100 yards rushing, which is obviously some very good things, but on top of that, uh, you, you know, 398 yards, you take out 181 of that, and that looks a whole lot better uh, from, from where we were and, or where we probably should have been. And that's just an emphasis that you have to put on in terms of you work it, you work it, you work it so much. Now you have film to go out there and say, hey, this is what it looks like. When you do things properly, right, we get a guy on the ground. When we don't, okay, these are the things that, uh, that we have to continue to work on moving forward. In terms of... Uh, uh, just the positives of the game, thought our, um, thought our communication and alignments and just execution of our fundamentals, or excuse me, of our scheme was uh, uh, very much to be praised in the, first, in the first game. That was really encouraging to be able to see our guys um, execute their assignments, fit the run consistently, uh, and attack the box uh, like we did, and even adjust to some things that, that I thought they did, they haven't shown in a couple years, which is some 21 personnel, downhill power, two-back stuff. Uh, hadn't seen any of those things, and we adjusted very well, both players and coaches in the middle of the game. So that was just, uh, uh, from where we were a year ago, just uh, tremendously encouraging in terms of those things. Um, Thought, uh, uh, thought from a negative standpoint, um, uh, or, or an area of improvement, rather, um, are obviously from a tackling standpoint, we've got to continue to work on those things. And then I thought as the game moved along, um, sometimes when you have young players out there and you don't do exactly what you may think you're going to do or you think maybe, hey, we'll get up on them, we'll get a nice comfortable lead or something like that, uh, guys start pressing a little bit um, because they're not sure. They don't want to be the one that gives up a play uh, to, to, you know, to expand a game or whatever it may be. And so just focusing in there, I thought we were a little timid in some of our coverages, particularly in third downs, thought we could have had, a, had an opportunity to be, dominate, uh, to be dominant in the situational downs and that we did not do those things. Um, so there was a lot of really good uh, film to be able to communicate off of, hey, guys, when you're in this situation, this is what we're trying to take away versus how we play things on first and second down. Um, looking ahead uh, for Eastern Illinois, um, obviously this place that I was before as a defensive coordinator, uh, so really enjoyed my time there in 2014 and 15. Had some great uh, Great years, great defenses, got to, an opportunity to go play in the playoffs and just uh, uh, 
uh, obviously we had um, got to our, our second son Tatum was born there and so we just love Charleston have some dear friends still in that area so kind of neat to to go do that starting to text back with some of the guys you know uh, still got a group text with some of those EIU guys and the trash talking has already begun so uh, so I'll have to have my game ready for them they were uh, it was a fun group so it's kind of a neat deal to go uh, play a team that you were at before uh, at the same time you're so focused on the things that we have to improve that really, for our guys, it really doesn't matter, especially uh, early on in the season as we go. It doesn't matter who you're playing and who you're going up against. It's about improving yourself and getting better every day, which is, I think, what we're really excited to get moving forward on. Questions? Uh, Tom was asked about this, the tackling in particular. I mean, is there anything that you emphasize or, or change or drill during practice? Yeah, I think, uh, you know, I'm not sure you can necessarily work it more than what we've worked it in terms of tackling. I think a lot of what we need to do um, or what has to happen is, is um, like at the beginning of every season, when you have a youthful defense that those guys, we had guys that played out there on the season last year, but they came in, you know, as backups or they had a role here, a role here, or maybe they got a little bit warmed up into the game in special teams and then came in on defense. Now they're the guys, you know, they're the ones that are having to run the show. And so I think there's a little bit of it where you just have to continue to harp on the things that we're harping on, but now you have evidence to show them when you don't do it properly, this is what happens, you know. And uh, sometimes, uh, I know this isn't the flashy answer, but the but the simple and real answer is sometimes you just got to feel 220 pounds coming down on you and feel like, oh, that's what it that's what it feels like to tackle. One thing that we probably will tweak in the way that we're tackling is just sometimes when a ball carrier is moving away from you um, and still moving downhill and away from you, sometimes that's hard to simulate in a practice. And so we're going to really work hard on in one specific drill to try to get that emphasis of. Ball carrier is moving, his momentum's away from you. You've got to drive your feet for two more steps on contact so that you're not making contact at the man, but you're actually making contact through the man. I think that showed up a couple times. Yeah, Coach, I guess the, the key to getting more pressure, more successful pressure, what will that be? Well, I think uh, part of, part of uh, being uh, successful in pressuring teams on passing downs, I assume, is what you're, you're, re you're referring to is understanding who they are, you know, what they do from a protection standpoint. And for us, we try to build our defensive pressures as the season moves on. You don't want to show everything in the very first week because you have to show this so that they prepare for this, and then you build on top of that and move forward. I uh, thought we did some really good things from a four-man rush standpoint, uh, uh, better than where we were a year ago. Um, didn't always get the sacks in the four-man rush, but the pressure was there so that the quarterback had to get the ball out. Thought Ball State had a really nice plan on top of that of most of their stuff was quick game. A lot of it was even max pro and, and quick game. So uh, thought that was encouraging to see that they felt like they needed to get the ball out quick. Certainly, um, as we continue to build things, I think, you know, at the end of the game, you saw Lino out there doing some things from a rush game standpoint. Um, thought we got some nice pressure in that two-minute drill when you know, hey, they're not going to go max protect. They've got to go in into what we call six-man uh, protections where it's the five linemen and, and a one back. Uh, and thought we got some really good pressure there. You uh, mentioned with the secondary, in, uh, you used the word timid, but mm -hmm. when, we're, when you're watching the game, it's always hard to tell whether that's a scheme thing or not. I mean, yeah. it was... Uh, um, uh, so when you look at it all said and done, you know, 300 yards is too much, right? 100%. Yeah. And uh, um, is, is that uh, – how do you change that? Is it where the film matters and watching it and just improving on that? Yeah, I think, I think the key is um, early in the season it's all about little tweaks and adjustments, right? Everybody wants to panic after a first game regardless, right? You do things well, you don't do some things well. The key is – I know it's not flashy, but consistency – is is the is the is what you have to build for young young men right to be able to execute at a high level you just have to create a consistent environment of this is our standard this is what we do and you hold them accountable to that standard right and so uh there's there's two different parts of timid coverage one is when you're in man coverage right um knowing that we got to get a piece of a guy or that we want to make collision um at, at a certain point a certain landmark before we get a double move right so now all of a sudden our feet are out here and he's making his second move on a cut 
and we haven't collisioned them at eight yards because we're still backing up to 12 yards, right? So there's some things in man coverage that we need to clean up. And then in zone coverage, especially when you're playing with vision eyes on the quarterback, uh, you do those things so that you can attack the quarterback's eyes and attack the receivers that he's trying to locate. And so both situations, I think, more than anything on third down showed up that we didn't do a good enough job in holding leverage and attacking our man coverage. And then some of our zone coverage, we didn't attack the ball uh, like you have to do whenever you're playing some vision change-ups. Coach, obviously improvement comes with time, like you've said, but in a season like this where the, the level of competition increases quickly, how do you get ahead of that curve where, or meet that level of competition? Well, I think, you know, the, you, you typically see such a great improvement, especially with a youthful defense from week one to week two, um, and then uh, you kind of just continue to build from there. So it just so happens, right, as we get ready for Eastern Illinois, right, that's our second game of the season, and, and the things that we think that we've got to do, regardless of who we're playing, is the expectation that we've set for ourselves. And I think the guys have been pretty hungry um, just after watching the film, seeing what they left out on the field, truly praising the process of what they did well, right, and you can't exclude those things. But yet at the same time, I don't think there's any one person in our defense that sat there saying oh, we didn't leave that field wanting more uh, from ourselves. And so I think just staying consistent at the process. Obviously not your first time as a defense coordinator, first game here. Was it just kind of falling into old habits for you? Was there anything different or new? Yeah, I mean, there's certainly you have a style of the way you like to call a game and the way you build things. But that style and the way you do those things always molds to what you have personnel wise. Uh, what you're trying to get accomplished as a team. Uh, and I think we do a really good job of that here just in terms of the communication between myself, Tom, Kalen, and Bill as our special teams coordinator of what are the things that we have to do to win this game specifically. And, uh, and so for me, um, I, I have a blast uh, calling defenses on game day. I mean, I, I've, it's, I'm in my element. It's what I most enjoy. Um, and being able to work and adjust on the sideline, I mean, that's – that's truly, that's what I've always dreamed about, and that's what I enjoy doing uh, from that standpoint. I thought our communication as a defensive staff was at a really high level going into the first game and never working um, together with me as the defensive coordinator. Obviously, we worked together, and maybe that learning curve is adjusted based off of that, um, but just really pleased with the communication from up in the box to the things that we had to adjust to, particularly because of the same, some of the things that Ball State gave us and, uh, and be able to adjust uh, in the middle of a game, not just even waiting for halftime. That, um, that was really encouraging from our standpoint. Uh, Coach Allen felt like the pressure on the quarterback was good. What was your assessment? How do you continue to stay creative in order to get kind of heat on the QB? I'm sorry, say that again. I couldn't. He quite thought that the uh, pressure on the quarterback was good. What was your assessment, and how do you continue to kind of get heat and bring heat? Yeah, I thought at times, uh, yes, I did think at times our, our pressure on the quarterback was better, both in four man rush and when we brought five and six man pressures. Um, you know, I think there's things that we want to build off of moving forward. Um, I think fall camp. You look back to spring ball, fall camp, and what we did in with a week of preparation, uh, particularly in third downs, I thought um, our execution across the board has been really good. Um, I did not feel like it was to the same standard when we walked out there on game day. And so a little bit of that is, you know, that pressure of that situation. I thought we played timid um, in some of our coverages, both when we were pressuring and playing man-to-man -man, and then when we were playing in some zone coverages as well. And, uh, and I think that's part of a pass rush is when you have tight coverage and you're aggressive and guys, you know, uh, take those calculated risks that you have to have on third down, right, which are very different on first and second down. But on third down, when you've got to get off the field, that tight coverage also improves our pass rush. But uh, for week one, very encouraging um, uh, to build off of.